on today's episode of the Cryptoverse. So this is a weekend episode of the Cryptoverse. That never happens, does it? I just you normally do the Cryptoverse Monday to Friday. And today I want to do something a little bit different. Um, I'm basically going to do a very casual podcast style episode of the Cryptoverse. What I'm going to do this morning is just basically take you through a tour of what I do every day, which is when I just give like a helicopter view of the entire Cryptoverse. And um, I'll just kind of share my thoughts as I go, providing the commentary. Now, normally I script the episodes, right? That's how come I can pack so much information in, in a short space of time um, without repeating anything and without umming and ahhing, right? Because when you think off the top of your head, that's generally what happens. And talking freestyle ends up with 30, 40 minute videos. So I'll do my absolute best not to do that today. So let's get into it. So a quick tour over to CoinMarketCap. Um, notably here, we've got Bitcoin SV down nearly, it's 11.65%. Both Bitcoin Cash and Bitcoin SV rocketed in the last couple of days, like 40 odd percent yesterday, if I if I remember rightly. There was speculation there that it was a bunch of short positions that were closing out. That's a similar theory with you know Bitcoin market rally. With Bitcoin Cash though, it it makes logical sense in this from this perspective. Because Bitcoin Cash did the split, some people would have think it was going to die. And if you thought it was going to die, you would put a short trade on, right? Because if if it went to zero, then you wouldn't have to actually pay for that short contract, right? You would buy it back at zero and make a you know almost an infinite profit. But now Bitcoin Cash is still alive, <clears throat> it might be time to close those short positions and that selling pressure being released may be what sprung the price so hard in the last couple of days. So that's just my speculation on that. In terms of the old buy support, it's creeping up a bit on Bitcoin. We're at 171 million um, at the current market price of 3,888. We'll look at the charts in just a mo. Second coin by buy support, this doesn't actually rank it in in uh, in the proper order it should. So I'm going to click that and do it. Yeah, Ethereum has the second most buy support, 34 million. EOS is now the third by buy support. Very interesting. Followed by XRP, Litecoin, Neo, IOTA, Ethereum Classic, Tron, and Cardano. But there is an awfully big gap here between the top four. So you've got Bitcoin, the big gorilla, 171 million. The next one down is 34 million with Ethereum. Then 10 million below that is EOS with 24 million. Another 10 million down from that is XRP with 15 million. Then there's another 10 million drop to Litecoin. That has about 6 million and down and down it goes from there. Litecoin and EOS roughly, this, sorry, Litecoin and NEO roughly the same amount of buy support. But Bitcoin far and away, you know, the most in-demand coin in the markets. So uh, just looking at my Steam profile, not many people commented yesterday. I just checked to make sure that the uh, the tips are going out to my supporters and so on. If you've got a Steam account, follow me on there. And uh, if you want to earn daily cryptocurrency rewards like this, then uh, we'll head over to the website, thecryptobest.show, and uh, check that out. We're up to 61 patrons now supporting the production of the Cryptoverse, so I appreciate every single one of you. Check out the goals section on, on my Patreon page to see what exactly we are working towards. We're 9% of the way towards what I'm calling Cryptoversity Local, which are these local meetups um, that will be all over the place using my course materials to teach people all to the crypto stuff far and wide. Now, how have I ended up with two trading views open here? What I've got on screen now is uh, the hourly chart from Coinbase. It's Bitcoin trading against the US dollar. And I drew this little rounded top yesterday when we got stuck around $4,000. We were in a lovely uptrend. We broke through 4,000 and then it got really, really choppy all of a sudden. We were flapping around from 4,200 at the top down to about 3,800 at the bottom. And there was lots of volatility in between there for, well, it was it was a good day, I think it was doing that. A good uh, 24 candles. I mean, I could even measure it. So it was about, yeah, a day and seven hours, 31 hours in total. And the tops, it was a rounded top, which I've drawn on the actual chart, if you are looking at this on the video version. But then it broke down quite hard below 4,000 and now is consolidating around 3,700 most recently with another pump upwards. So looking okay, still looking okay. What's a little bit concerning about the recent 
um, volume is, is declining. You'll notice if you look at the hourly chart on Coinbase here, like this, um, we actually don't want that to be extended really. So let me just turn that off. And then on the right end, I could put an arrow like that. So you see the, the blue area, the volume is going down. So I use that in conjunction with the buy support. I want to see buy support increasing as the price increases, right? Because that would be momentum. That would be the snowball effect taking into effect. So that's where Bitcoin is at. Uh, let's have a look at the let's look at the daily because this is the bullish reversal line, the big yellow one, which joins the peak ups from the swing high on the daily charts. We're still miles away from it right now. <clears throat> Excuse me. And you can see what the 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 Kelly the, the rounded top looks like on the daily. It looks like nothing. But we're still we're still miles away from the you know bearish reversal line here. If I measure it, we're still we still need to gain like 40 or 50 percent from where we are to get to that um, bearish reversal line. So that's that. On to the headlines then. This is my news scanner. Uh, I haven't actually looked at these, so I'm literally going to be reading them to you as I go through them. What we got here from Bitcoin news, Bitcoin ATMs double in number this year, 2018. Ron Paul says abolish the Federal Reserve and embrace Bitcoin. Hmm, that one sounds interesting. Maybe we should uh, take a look at that one. So when I when I find an article I like, I just pop it open in a new tab and then go back to my news reader. Crypto Globe's reporting that customers can now pay with cryptocurrency at a Brazilian supermarket chain. That's always good news. Uh, often I get these little sponsored ads appearing in my news feed. That's fine. The Facebook stablecoin, WhatsApp transactions in India first. What's next? I kind of reported on that yesterday. We don't have any sort of hard confirmation about that yet. No official word from Facebook. So I'm going to, yeah, I'm not going to take too much influence from that. Yes, they were probably working on it. Yes, yes, all the yeses, but it's just it's just a weak, it's just a wet fish right now. There's no, there's no substance to it. You know, of course they're working on it, but it doesn't mean anything at, at this time. United Arab Emirates to introduce initial coin offering regulations in the first half of 2019. Okay, that should be good. Uh, Dogecoin price falls below 0 0.0025 cents for the time being. I don't like the price ones, the articles. What's the point? I don't see the point in uh, this is a bit of a hypocritical thing to say. I don't see the point in writing a text article about the price because literally the moment you publish it, it's uh, out of date, right? Now, I, I, the reason I say that's a bit of a hypocritical thing to say is because often I do like technical analysis videos and talks about talk about the price. And the moment I load it to YouTube or the podcast platforms, it is also going out of date immediately. Canada encouraged cannabis sector to transact discreetly. I reported on that. They, they were saying minimum personal information when you do a cannabis transaction in person. Uh, they also suggest using cash if you're paranoid about credit card information being stored. Where are they now? More than a year since the ICO ban, China is a world leader in blockchain technologies. A crypto investor's heartfelt letter to Santa. Okay, interesting. Nigeria, crypto experts call for regulation to help the industry grow. Uh, how have Bitcoin futures performed one year on? That's a good point. The CBOE uh, XBTC futures launched 17th of December 2017, ran around where Bitcoin hit its all-time high. So it's uh, it's only been a year with Bitcoin futures. Next headline says: Following crypto mining crash, GPU producer Nvidia has the worst perform is the worst performer in the S&P 500. Well, that's obviously set people's expectations too high. In terms of earnings, if their if their if their sales skyrocketed because because of you know wicked GPU sales because mining was all the rage, well if those sales tank, it's going to make Nvidia's sales go back to the baseline, right? Where the baseline of sales that it should be because when gamers are buying them, but that's going to look like a disappointment based on artificially inflated figures from the last year, right? So it's not really fair. Perception is reality in the stock market. That's just really the way it is. Belgian authorities update blockchain blacklist with 14 new exchanges. Litecoin remains stable for the third day running. Bitfinex crypto exchange launches margin trading for stablecoin Tether. Oh, that's interesting. Stable using Tether for margin trading. Hmm. That's much more like a fiat exchange thing, right? The launch of backed Bitcoin futures market may get postponed again. 
from the coin desk. What, what are they basing that on? We'll have a look at that one in a second. So this is how I cherry pick what I'm gonna you know put into the show. Pro crypto congressmen look to challenge long-standing securities definition. I saw about this one. There is speculation that uh, we could, you know, not not repeal the Howey test, but rather make cryptocurrencies exempt from it, which would be fantastic. Learn about the BCH network with Bitcoins.com mastering Bitcoin Cash. What's that? Not a course or something. Having a gas this week in crypto pop culture. Uh, maker holders vote against short-term self-interest to lower stability fees. Wow, that's brilliant. So Maker is the infrastructure behind the die stable coin. That's why I'm interested in that one. And that the more stable the mechanism, the more the MKR holders earn. So it's in their interest to have stable monetary policy. Lack of crypto insurance hindered mainstream adoption. Yeah, I agree. Still, the insurers will be paranoid about uh, security, no doubt. US lawmakers introduce bill to impose sanctions on Iranian national cryptocurrency. Yep, I read that one as well. Iran's going towards the Venezuelan style. Let's use a cryptocurrency, a national cryptocurrency, to uh, get around US sanctions. The El Petro is the Venezuelan one, and uh, Iran is looking into that as well. Red Eyes Black Dragon, Raiden's Network Alpha live on Ethereum. I saw them tweet this out, actually. This is interesting, the Raiden network, it's like a, it's like a lightning style network for Ethereum, which that's, uh, that holds a lot of promise for Ethereum. Ethereum could really be doing with something like that right about now to help it compete with the Trons and the, you know, the EOSes, EOSes of the world in terms of performance. US telecoms giant Comcast to make Bitcoin, sorry, to make blockchain software available in 2019. Ross Ulbricht's mother hopeful that President Trump could pardon Silk Road founder. I had a chat with a friend of mine yesterday about this. That um, who says this? Uh, was it Andreas Antonopoulos says this? I can't remember. Don't quote me on that. Sorry, Andreas, if I'm misquoting you here. But um, the general consensus of opinion in the crypto space and the privacy advocates is that Ross Ulbricht has been put in prison for host for for running a website. Right? He didn't perpetrate any crimes himself. It was more. Um, the traders on his website so it's like if i go on ebay and sell something illegal uh, you know ebay aren't liable for that because they're just running the website i should be arrested for that because i did the crime right so could trump pardon ross ulbricht that would be a right shocker and uh trump is the shocker man so maybe he will bch powered blockchain aims to protect literature from a dystopian future Lightning Network Milestone, micro auction art piece sells for 0. 0.00000037 cents. You know, I think it was one Satoshi. It was the Black Swan crypto art. It was brilliant where this artist used a scalpel and they carved up a dollar bill and then they made this brilliant square with a black swan with these leaves behind it. It was absolutely brilliant. And then they auctioned it off on the Lightning Network to the lowest bidder. So that was cool. U.S. lawmakers seek sanctions against Iran. Yep. So the thing about this news scanner is it's pulling in headlines from all the various cryptocurrency news websites. So if they, if more than one of them reports on the same story, the headline appears, you know, more than once. Wyoming County to put land records on the blockchain. Yeah, that one's good. I like that one. We always think that land titles on the blockchain is for, you know, Africa or something, but not necessarily. Bitmain IPO suffers major setback as Hong Kong regulator declares crypto firms immature. <laughs> Russia moves ahead on Eurasian Economic Union cryptocurrency. Hmm, interesting. Facebook developing a WhatsApp crypto. Brazilian supermarket. Tiny artworks sold. Giving back, now building for a future. Charles Hoskinson, visionary crypto change agent and Cardano founder. What's that? An interview with Toshi Times. Energy incentives make Bitcoin mining a natural fit for British Columbia, Canada. News of news for bears and bulls. Winter Solace Edition. Uh, backed settlement futures. This is where you start seeing a lot of repetition once you've got the juicy ones out. Chinese fintech incubator zone officially begins operations in the Guangdong province. ICO projects 
liquidating at an increasing rate DR research. Introducing Dexter, whatever that is. Officials as, officials at top Korean exchange upbit indicted for fraud. Oh dear. Oh, that's not good, is it? Oh dear me. That's not good at all. I'll pop that one out. Uh, Russian finance minister considers EA EU digital currency inevitable due to the US sanctions. Oh, well, Russia's at it now. Russia's at it now. This is going to be the thing, isn't it? Any country that gets sanctioned by the US is going to run to crypto as a censorship resistant money or free speech money, as I call it now. What else? Consensus reportedly planning to lay off up to 60% of its staff. Oh dear. Despite the slump in crypto prices, Bitcoin ATMs more than doubled. Uh, what else? Anything else here? Mining ASIC producer eBang reports significant decreases in revenue from July to September. No surprise there. Bermuda Financial Regulator releases draft regulation for crypto custodial services. Ron Paul again. Ether Outlook. Civil backed news site stores full article on the Ethereum blockchain. Hmm, could be interesting. Probably going to get a chance to read all these, by the way, but. Because I only really go back, you, you notice if you're watching this on the video, on the far right hand side of each row, it tells me how old the article is in hours. So we're going back in time here. I usually stop when I get to 24 hours because I do it once a day. So there's no need to do it any more than once a day. Coinbase CEO, first crypto entrepreneur to join Buffett founded billionaire charity pledge. Okay, it's not particularly interesting. Wall Street Journal suggests quick sale, quick sale repurchase of Bitcoin may lower your taxes. Maybe in the US. Bitfinex opens trading of USD pegged tether against USD. Interesting. Irish Red Cross partners on blockchain powered app to bring transparency to donations. It's cool. Coinbase brings its platform to six more European countries. Uh, Coinbase president on cryptos, be greedy when others are fearful. Facebook crypto again. NASDAQ closing in on the bear market from stocks to Bitcoin. Okay, now we're at the 24 hour mark. So let's uh, look at the ones that I've picked out. Um, they've gone in reverse order now. So let's go to the Ron Paul article. Ron Paul, abolish the Federal Reserve and embrace Bitcoin. Former US congressman Ron Paul has been bashing the Federal Reserve again after it raised interest rates a, qu a quarter of a point. The renowned Bitcoin fan called the Fed's call for the Fed's abolition, saying that the free market should dictate interest rates. Well, didn't Ron Paul write the book End the Fed? And also, isn't that what banks are supposed to do? Let the sort of let the free market decide on interest rates. A bank is supposed to sit in the middle, take my savings um, and offer an interest rate to incentivize me to put the savings in their bank, and then they have to turn around and lend that to someone at a higher interest rate that they're willing to pay and then make a profit on the difference. If another bank offers me a better interest rate on my savings, well, I'm going to go put my money over there, right? But then that means, you know, the bank has a higher cost to borrow that money and then lend it out. So the market should dictate it, right? How much people are willing to borrow the money for and how much are people willing to basically lend it? Because that's what you do with your savings, right? So Ron Paul on Twitter said, the Fed has no idea what rates should be. The Fed manipulates prices, distorts the economy, makes decisions by looking at the data, quote, of a distorted economy. This is the fourth time US interest rates have gone up this year, sparking fears of potential recession. The blame for which should be laid squarely at the door of the Federal Reserve, according to Ron Paul. Quote again, it is likely that the next Fed created recession will come sooner rather than later that he warned in October. He also suggested that such a major catastrophe could lead to the end of fiat currency. Well, like Mike Maloney says, historically, every fiat currency has gone to its natural value of zero. So it's only a matter of time before the fiat currencies of today go to zero based on historical trends. So tax-free crypto can save us, he says. Here's another quote. The only way to avoid crisis is to force Congress to end our monetary madness. The first steps are passing the audit... Sorry, the first steps are passing... The audit the Fed bill, allowing people to use alternative currencies and exempting all transactions in precious metals and cryptocurrencies from capital gains taxes and other taxes. 
Yes, I agree with that because if it's a currency, we you know we don't get taxed on the if the pound goes up against the dollar and I get greater purchasing power. I don't have to pay capital gains tax on that, do I? Right. Anyway, so finally here, Ron Paul markets are more powerful. Ron, sorry, Paul, Paul, Ron Paul also appeared on Fox News discussing the artificial effect of the interest rate change on the market. He claims that, <clears throat> excuse me, a free market would not be affected by a quarter percent interest rate rise, but the fragility of the market and the anticipated the anticipation built into it needs correcting. Although nobody wants to take sorry to tackle this politically. Finally, he says that although he criticizes the Fed, the markets are ultimately more powerful. That was an article from Bitcoinist.com. So next one from CoinDesk: Launch of backed Bitcoin futures market could get postponed again. So the Intercontinental Exchange, the parent company of the New York Stock Exchange, is likely to delay the launch of backed. It's Bitcoin futures trading and custody platform a second time, Coindesk has learned. The company last set the 24th of January as the launch date. However, ICE has yet to receive the necessary approvals from the US Commodity Futures Trading Commission, the CFTC. And at the pace the agency has been moving, it's unlikely that the approvals will be secured in time to hit the target. Well, that's the thing I said. Every time I reported on BACT and I looked at the official you know, document and so on, it did say pending regulatory approval. So we can assume 24th of January is, is on, assuming they get the regulatory approval, but it's not confirmed, is it? So it says here, to be clear, that does not mean the CFTC won't ultimately approve the plan. A person familiar with the agency's inner workings said that a January 30th launch was still plausible, meaning the delay could be just a matter of days. So that's not so bad. Again, perception is reality, so any delay is going to upset the market a little bit, I think. So moving on. This article is from Ethnews, uh, MKR, Maker Holders, vote against short-term self-interest uh, to lower stability fees. Hmm. So on the 21st of December, MKR token holders voted to decrease the DAI stability fee from 2.5% back to its earlier rate of 0.5%. According to MakerDAO Medium post posted earlier this week, the proposal was prompted by crypt sorry, crypto's recent dynamic price volatility which has apparently led to an increase demand for DAI, the stablecoin. In order to incentivize the mining of more DAI, which happens when people take out loans through CDP, and they increase supply, Maker proposed lowering stability fees. So under the MakerDAO system, stability fees, essentially the interest rate on CDPs, are denominated in DAI but must be paid in MKR. Once paid, MKR is burned, reducing the supply and hypothetically increasing the price of MKR. Reducing stability fees means that less MKR is burnt, potentially decreasing the price of MKR. That's interesting. So the holders of MKR might see a capital loss, you know, on paper for their MKR, but in the interests of um, lowering the stability fee of DAI. So interesting. That shows some character in the MKR ecosystem. Next story is also from Ethnews. Wyoming County to put land records on the blockchain. So it says here, with help from Overstock.com, or a subsidiary, Wyoming is again blazing blockchain trails. Administrators from Teton County in Wyoming have signed a memorandum of understanding with Overstock.com's subsidiary Medici Land Governance. Medici, Medici, some people say it that way, some people say it the other way. So they've reached this agreement to develop blockchain platform, a blockchain platform to track, record and make available to the public certain information relating to real property for management purposes. That is according to a press release on the 20th of December from Overstock. So Overstock states that all Teton County documents related to land management dating back to 1996, such as mortgages and releases of liens, will be placed on the blockchain platform, excluding any title information that is not already available to the public on existing land record systems. Okay, okay, that makes more sense. Rather than converting the entire existing system to blockchain, they're going to start adding stuff that isn't on there. On there, Once launched, the blockchain platform is also intended to automatically capture and record all succeeding transactions related to land management and update the blockchain platform accordingly. Very nice. Oh, well, check this out, though. I track Overstock's stock price. 
and it's not been doing very well. So if I put this on the old weekly chart, look, it sort of followed the Bitcoin boom bust cycle. It hit an all time high on the 8th of January, right about what 90 odd dollars or something. And today it's $13. So that's uh, not good for overstocks stock. Next story comes from Bitcoin.com. Officials at top Korean crypto exchange Upbit indicted for fraud. Oh dear me. Officials at South Korea's largest crypto exchange Upbit have been indicted for fraud. They allegedly made bogus crypto orders worth approximately $226 billion and sold 11,550 BTC to around 26,000 investors. Upbit has denied the charges and insisted that it did not commit fraud, engage in wash trades or trade cryptocurrencies it did not own. Three officials at South Korea's largest cryptocurrency exchange have been indicted for quote offering sorry in, have been indicted for offering fraudulent transactions and swindling money from investors, uh, according to Yonhap. Whatever what's what Yonhap? Don't know what that is. According to the Southern Seoul District Prosecutor's Office. A board chairman, a financial director, and a working-level official of the exchange allegedly opened a fake account around September of last year, the news outlet conveyed. The prosecutor said that the officials made bogus orders worth 254 trillion won, which is where they got the $226 billion from, over a period of about two months to inflate the cryptocurrency transactions and lure more customers. Mm, that's not good, is it? So Upbit denied the allegations... Uh, they strongly deny the allegations. The investigation into the exchange operations started eight months ago. On Friday, the cacao-backed exchange released a detailed explanation of what happened. First of all, we would like to express our deepest regrets for causing much anxiety aroused by the indictment, the exchange began. The case is related to some transactions during a three-month period last year, from the 24th of September to the 31st of December. Noting that its exchange was launched on October the 24th, Upbit explained blamed that all transactions in question were from when our company was preparing for and had just launched and the Upbit service. All transactions took place in Upbit after that period and are not related to the case. Hmm. Okay. Well, not good. Not good for Upbit, eh? All right, let's move on to this final article here. Civil backed news site stores the full full articles on the Ethereum blockchain. So US news out a US US news article has been stored in its entirety on the Ethereum blockchain in what its writer claims is a world first. Has no one thought of this before? Really? Maria Bustillos, Bustillos editor with the journalist-owned popular, popular news website, announced Monday that she had archived an article originally published in Death and Taxes magazine onto the Ethereum blockchain in full, as well as storing its hash on the IPFS protocol. As a result, the article will be preserved for as long as the blockchain and IPFS persist. Um, I think that's the wrong way to do it. I think you've done it the wrong way around. You store the you store the article on IPFS, and then you store the hash in the Ethereum blockchain, right? Because the Ethereum blockchain is not good for data storage. IPFS is for data storage. So whoever this is has got it the wrong way around. So Bustillos told CoinDesk that the goal of storing news articles irrevocably on a blockchain is one she has been pursuing as far back as 2012, 2013, when she began writing about Bitcoin. Okay, in her defense then, um, IPFS doesn't persist forever. It only persists for as long as the nodes continue to host that file and as long as it's in demand. Whereas if you store it in the Ethereum blockchain, it doesn't matter whether it's in demand or not, it persists. So, hmm. okay, so there we go. Uh, the article was stored with the aid of blockchain journalists Startup Civil and its engineers, Civil provided Popular with a grant as it began operation. So that's how Civil are you know, involved in all this stuff. Lovely. A uh, few more stops in the roundup. I usually check Reddit and the best stories of the day. Mastermind Rio Nero is now the number one release on Amazon. Really? Mastering Rio Nero, The Future of Private Transactions is a book. Never even heard of that. Who wrote that then? Don't know. Uh, the Monero community written by Set Hack, I think it says in tiny letters on the screenshot. What tools are missing most in EOS is a discussion. Uh, VPN services added by 
bet refill in the Dash community. Mm, the Reddit's not a great source of um it's just got a lot of spiel in there, isn't it? Check the Bitcoin mempool, 500 transactions waiting to confirm right now. Also, just a quick stop over at the blockchain.com to see what situation is with the mining hash rate, right? Because people were thinking about, ah, oh, death spiral. Oh, it's stabilized. What a surprise. Hmm, not surprised at all. So it's bottomed out. If I go back to the difficulty chart, we should see this flatten out over the next few difficulty adjustments, assuming that the hash rate remains the same. So there isn't a Bitcoin death spiral. It's all good in the hood. Um, there we go. All right. I think that's pretty much all I've got for you today. If you like this episode, hit the like button. If you disliked it, hit the dislike button. Leave me a comment below with feedback and get subscribed. Also, make sure you check out my online school, Cryptoversity. Uh, you go to cryptoasset.school. You can check out my online courses. You can uh, sign up to this thingy here if you're brand new to crypto and you want to learn how crypto revolution is bigger than the internet. Put your name and email in and you'll get a three-part uh, video series that'll explain that to you. If you want more in-depth learning for one low monthly fee, this is kind of like the uh, the Netflix of crypto education. Sign up for one low monthly fee and you get access to all seven of the online courses that are now available, including the new one, which is Crypto Exchange Mastery. It's in production right now. I'll be working on that today. So uh, every time there's a new lesson finished, I upload it right away. If you want to earn a passive income in Bitcoin, check out the affiliate program where you can uh, promote cryptoversity, spread cryptocurrency education, and uh, earn a passive income in Bitcoin. Other than that, I'll be back with the next episode of the Cryptoverse. So until then, it's me, Chris Coney, saying bye for now.